So let's spend a little time examining the referendum on electoral reform in British Columbia with my next two guests. Bill Tillman is a union lobbyist and a leader for the no side in favor of keeping the first past the post system. And Maria Dobrinskaya is the BC director for the Broadbent Institute and a leader for the yes side, urging a change to a system of proportional representation. Uh, thank you both for joining me, first of all. And Maria, maybe I can start with you. Uh, how engaged are BC voters in this referendum? Are they plugged in or are they shrugging it off? Uh, well, I think we're seeing a bit of both. Uh, we're certainly um, very encouraged by a lot of the engagement we're seeing. Um, I think there's a big discrepancy um, from a generational perspective. Uh, young folks in particular are really excited about the opportunity to upgrade our, our voting system, to have a voting system that ensures the will of the electorate is reflected in the legislature. Um, but it's admittedly challenging to, to get British Columbians engaged. Um, I'm encouraged by the numbers we're seeing. We're up uh, over 30 percent now, 33 percent. Um, in terms of participation thus far. And um, Elections BC has extended the, the deadline, as you know, to December 7th. So um, we're, the, the, the returns are, in the, are coming in the right trajectory. And, and um, you know, people are frustrated in general with politics. And, and I think, um, you know, once we start talking to people, whether it's about strategic voting or the frustrations of, of living in a, in a safe seat, uh, people are, are quite excited about the opportunity to, to do things differently here. Bill Tillman, how do you see it? The process generating excitement? I mean, 33 no. uh, percent, it's, it's, go it's, it's going up, but it's a long way from the kind of numbers you'd like to see on a, on a referendum this important. No, Peter, people are not excited about this at all. And the, the fact of the matter is, uh, the last referendum we had in British Columbia was on the harmonized sales tax. We had a 55% turnout, which is about equivalent with a provincial election. We're languishing at 33%. And we've got, uh, you know, a real lot of people who are saying this is too complicated, it's too confusing. But it's also not a priority. People voted 61% in favor of our first-past-the-post system, our current system, back in 2009, just a few years ago. This is really a, a referendum that didn't need to happen. The British Columbians have already spoken quite clearly uh, in the very recent past. And unfortunately, we're doing it all over again. And, and then if it passes, we're going to have yet another referendum in a couple more elections. So we're kind of referendum crazy here, I guess. Maria, this is the third referendum on electoral reform in B.C. in 13 years. Uh, Bill, Bill's touched on some of the past results. Why are we having another referendum in British Columbia now? Uh, because the issue doesn't go away, because people's frustration with politics and our political institutions is growing. And frankly, there's a whole generation of voters uh, that weren't eligible to vote in 2005 or 2009. Um, you know, again, I'm going to come back to the generational divide we see consistently in, in polling. Um, the, the high levels of support from voters uh, 35 and under, um, support for changing our voting system relative to the high levels of support for, uh, our, for the status quo amongst um, people age 55 and older. So I think it's really your experience uh, with democracy. People are increasingly frustrated. As I mentioned, they're, 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 they don't see the will of the electorate um, reflected in the legislature. They don't see government addressing the biggest challenges of, of our era. And again, particularly for young people, looking at, at a very um, challenging future, I would say. The first generation, um, you know, in, in a century that have been told straight up that they should expect less than, than their parents or grandparents generation and and that's not good enough okay. we we have an opportunity yeah sorry, sorry. sorry. bill let, let me have you jump what's the pitch from the no side uh, let, let's go there what why do you think this you've touched well, on the fact it's a waste of time why should people say yeah. no well we have a system which is simple it's stable it's successful it's been in use for 145 of bc's years we've done very well as a province it's the envy of canada and the world and uh, those are all very positive reasons to continue. And for older voters, to Maria's point, uh, people who have had lots of experience with this system realize that it is the best system compared to what we see in Europe, where we see uh, extremist groups, fringe parties. We see uh, all sorts of instability in Sweden, in Germany, uh, in Austria, real challenging situations there. Why would we want to switch systems to something that, uh, that actually encourages parties to go to extremist positions in order to win just a few seats and potentially the balance of power? So um, those are the kind of problems. But proportional representation takes power away from voters and gives it to political parties. Uh, we've got a lot of different problems with it, and I think as voters look at this uh, through this referendum period, they're again going to endorse first past the post. What's the response to that, Maria? Because that, that's certainly the concerns that are raised by a number of people who oppose proportional representation or some of the points uh, that Bill has made, but what's the counter to that? 
Well, I mean, I think when you say it works well, you, you, the, the question needs to be for who. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think there's an argument that could be made that first pass, pass the post um, could work well in a two-party system and, and arguably has served British Columbia and Canada well uh, historically. Um, but we live in a multi-party uh, political environment now, a much more complex political environment than previously. We've seen the, the outcomes of provincial elections recently, whether it's Ontario or, or New Brunswick or um, Quebec, um, all with, with more than two parties competing. And, and first past the post is unable to accommodate a multi-party um, system. They're unable, it's unable to translate the will of the electorate in any kind of um, accurate way. And that's why we see these distorted outcomes, um, unclear um, winners. We, you know, in, in New Brunswick, uh, we had a situation where the, the party with the most votes did not win government. Um, we have majority governments elected in Quebec uh, with uh, less than 40 percent of the electorate. Um, and so a lot of people are, are frustrated. They're, they're, they're disengaged and, um, and they don't feel like the system is working for them. Um, we have high, high levels of and growing of inequality, uh, precarious work, uncertainty about economic stability in the future, climate crisis. So I think that there's an appetite for a political system that is, is better um, equipped, frankly, to address the complexity and magnitude of the challenges we're facing in the 21st century. Bill, Bill is one of the issues that if, if you look at the, uh, as I understand the ballot, if you, if you choose proportional representation, then there's three options uh, to try and pick from. And is that going to be confusing for a lot of people? Well, it is confusing because two of them have never been tried anywhere in the world. And one is only used in about four countries nationally as their main system. So uh, what we've got are people looking at this and saying, first of all, I don't, I don't even understand. And the government hasn't done anything to help. They have not provided riding boundary maps or proposed maps of riding so people don't know what their size of the riding would be. It could be double the size under one of the systems. It could be 40% large under another. They don't know how many MLAs they would have. It could be one. It could be two. It could be as many as seven. Uh, and they don't know how many votes they would have even. It could be one vote, it could be two votes, one for a candidate and one for a party. So all these things are left for the majority government uh, coalition or alliance between the NDP and the Greens to decide afterwards uh, in this referendum, not beforehand. And that should have been all put to voters as a complete package. And we really should have had two competing systems so you can compare apples to apples instead of apples to cherries, bananas and oranges. What, what happens, with, so the, as I understand it as well, the, the, it's 50 percent plus one. If, if there's a vote for change, no. uh, that will, I mean, is that, is Marie, Marie, is that result binding, 50 plus one, and then what happens? Yeah, the government has um, has made it binding. The first question is binding. So 50% plus one on a vote to either move to proportional system or uh, keep first past the post. Um, and then, yeah, there's a number of, of questions still to be determined after the fact. Some of those will be determined by an all-party committee of the legislature. Um, the Electoral Boundaries Commission will then um, draw up boundaries, uh, to Bill's point. And Elections BC will also be tasked with um, implementing um, some of those outcomes. There is going to be a referendum. It, it, should the vote be successful this time, there's a referendum scheduled for two elections um, after um, so that voters have the opportunity to experience um, First, or to experience proportional representation. I think a lot of the, the challenges that people are having is just not having the, the, the experience, not knowing what their ballot is going to look like. Uh, Ninety countries in the world use proportional representation. Um, there's certainly nothing about citizens in Germany or in Scotland or in New Zealand that makes them more able to understand a proportional system than people in British Columbia would be. But I think in the absence of having the experience, um, you know, it is, it is unclear and unfamiliar. And so the opportunity to design a made in BC system to ensure that we have a system here that recognizes the particular uh, demographic and geographic needs of our province people have the opportunity to experience voting in that system how many MLAs do they have how responsive are their MLAs what kind of um, uh, you know dynamics do we see uh, in the legislature and in the government and then have an opportunity to go back and, and vote on that I think is really important what we've seen in other jurisdictions that have had the same process is that un once voters have the opportunity to experience first past the post or experience proportional representation pardon me um, they've all they have not voted to return to first past the post. All right, Bill. What, what, what do you predict is going to happen here? And I, and I, and weigh in too on the on the notion that so, I guess one of the, the the one of the bumps in the road I think I can see is that suppose there's a vote for proportional representation, but no clear indication of which model people want. If they do want proportional representation, then that gets decided. I think as Maria said by by an all-party committee. And do you have any concerns about that process? 
Oh, the whole the whole thing is a huge concern because first of all, we have no participation threshold uh, here, Peter. Uh, so if if we stop at thirty three percent, that's it. And then out of that, it could be a third, a third, a third for each of these three systems that are proposed. So we could have as little as you know thirteen, twelve percent of the population deciding on a system, which mm -hmm. is indefinite. Notwithstanding, uh, the government has promised to hold a referendum, but a future government could say, we don't think we need it, and that's the end of that. So the whole thing is fraught with peril for British Columbians. It's a very risky political science experiment in our view. And to take a system which we have now and take a risk on something which is in the unknown, as I said, two out of three systems never used anywhere else, uh, is to me extremely risky with so much at stake in our economy, okay. jobs. And one of the reasons why people aren't voting is because they're more concerned about those issues, about health care and education, environment, social services, than they are about uh, electoral systems and algorithms, uh, which has been the debate in this, in this referendum. Okay, two, 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 less than two weeks to go before uh, people uh, have to get their, their votes in in British Columbia, and then we'll watch to see what the results and uh, see what happens in, uh, with electoral reform in British Columbia. Thank you both for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Peter.